Is what, what's your why? What's, what, what, what keeps you here? Why are you doing this? Yeah, the, the space, uh, I think we talked about it a little bit at the beginning. The space is, uh, of investing has changed fundamentally. When I graduated from business school, my first job was uh, as a manager in the management team of the Sony Pictures Venture Fund, uh, which we invested in media companies globally. And uh, back then, we invested in a satellite channel in India that did extremely well, better than a lot of the motion pictures group of films did that year. Um, so interesting for me is that back then, we had to wait maybe seven to 10 years for an outcome of that fund and going back through our limits, which was a corporate, you know, kind of showing them a return on investment. Um, today, I advise hedge funds, you know, which are liquid investments and not necessarily waiting anything to kind of figure out what's going on in the market. Because from the hedge fund perspective, you can invest in things that are already liquid, which have cryptocurrencies and NFTs, which you guys are building businesses around. And the venture funds are also investing in that space. So if you talk to a fund of funds today, they'll say, we prefer to invest in the liquidity. In, even in the venture funds that are investing in a tokenized venture and an NFT-driven venture, because we can see an uptake in that investment much faster than you know, 10 to 14 years, which is what you know, came after the original 7 to 10. Yeah, this is speed and chance about visibility in this space. You know, what people embrace immediately or what companies embrace immediately. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying this is fun. Um, no, but uh, in all seriousness, I think when, when the NFT stuff started happening, I saw so many different new business models just emerge, and, and the way companies started, and the way companies worked with each other. And having been in the start more traditional Web2 startup world, seeing these kind of new ways for businesses to start, for DAOs to form, for, for collaboration, for building on top of someone else's data, then that was absolutely fascinating. And today I'm still in it, not because I say fundamentally it will be in a lot of places like they were talking about in the last, uh, last panel, but also I'm seeing a lot of learning from Web3 now being applied back to Web2. So I'm actually seeing a lot of non blockchain companies that look like blockchain companies, which I think is a, is a fascinating impact of Web3. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, an old, I'm an old, so uh, I've yeah. never seen a lot of cycles. I was, I was, uh, I, ran, I started my first company in the in the mid '90s. Actually, the first product was called Avatar Maker, which uh, was sort of populating 3D virtual worlds built on virtual reality Marvel language. So, uh, the way I, I mean, I look at this stuff to those like, uh, this, yeah, oh, it's it's part, yeah. Like, those were single virtual worlds that will now be connected by NFTs into the multiverse, but. Um, uh, I, I like to look at things with the long arc of history. There's a, there's a couple of people who sort of at least alluded to earlier today. I, I really just look at this as another epochal shift in software architecture. You go back far enough, you had mainframe computers, and you had client server, and you had internet and cloud, and now you have this really interesting new set of protocols that are fundamentally, at least in some ways, a new way of delivering software with this very interesting beast called the smart contract that enables a bunch of the really interesting things that Yogi talked about. So just as cloud enabled a whole new set of business models like rental software, you used to not actually be able to rent software, you had to pay a license for it. Uh, I think a lot of amazing things are happening around um, well, financing, using tokens, it's a complete shift in capitalism that potentially all the community stuff, all the supply formation that, that was very, very hard to do before uh, tokens and real estate. Um, so what I like, personally, from an investment standpoint, uh, the things that we brought into the Filecoin uh, Textiles Accelerator, which, by the way, applications are open, so apply, interested. But I really, I actually still think, at the end of the day, I, and I, kind of, I, I hope that I believe that crypto for the sake of crypto is hopefully fading away. I know it's very interesting, people get super excited about it, but you ought to be interested in crypto because you're using it to solve a real problem or meet a real need. And so those are the kinds of things that interest me. So I like, for example, a company that went through the last Falcon program called Transcripts. They solve an enterprise problem. So they do employee and credit verification. So employers are always getting hammered by, by banks and other people asking to say, can you verify that this person works as your company? Can you verify their salaries, this, that, or the other? They use a, a, they use an immutable ledger that the employee controls to put their information in, and then the company verifies, and they have this nice, low-cost, automated way 
but taking the burden of that verification off of the company. And it's a state of per employee model built on a blockchain, but that's the kind of thing that I find very interesting. But by the way, guess what? They have all that user data and they empower the users to be able to do whatever they want with the data. So that's what I like. Um, so how did I get, how did we get into the space? Um, why are we here? Like what you see is that's really cool. What keeps you going? Okay. Um, what keeps you going here? What keeps you going here? Um, caffeine mostly. But uh, the, um, I come from a very web two world of entertainment. I uh, worked as a studio producer for 10 years, made you know, big films with Sony, Warner Brothers, Universal. Um, my big film was horrible. Um, and also worked for artist management companies and then founded my own uh, celebrity venture company and worked with a couple of big names, Paris Hilton and, and Billy Eilish and a couple of others. Um, but in, so I, I looked at this as sort of in two tracks. The first is um, what was the value of what were celebrity businesses doing? Celebrity businesses went from um, you know, endorsements and just appearances. And then they went into leveraging that interest to be an equity stakeholder in the business, kind of a celebrity partnership. Then they started building their own funds and started to invest into these and adding a service layer on top of that for an outsized piece of equity. Um, and then occasionally a hybrid deal with cash. And then now you see also now private equity. So you've been case announced I think two weeks ago where now she's um, picked up this massive um, uh, private equity fund and starting to uh, invest into these uh, store businesses. So you see that, and then also you see the evolution of um, uh, direct-to-consumer between, um, sorry, so you see the evolution of the Web3 technology and being able to bring artists and fans closer together. So to me, like this Web3 evolution is just kind of this next step in direct-to-consumer. And I specifically look at that around uh, entertainment and bringing fans closer to their teams or favorite artists or in favor of entertainment experiences. Wow, that's cool. Uh, so, you know, this is a, 